morning and welcome back to the channel. Today we are actually at my father-in-law's retirement ceremony. So I don't think we have any time, so let's go in. the DOD Inspector General Senior Program Evaluator, Pentagon, Washington, D.C. We are also pleased to welcome Lieutenant Colonel McCarty's wife, Lisa, and their sons, Skylar and Zachary. The grandchildren, please be seated. At this time, please join me in welcoming Lieutenant Colonel Robert Moore. like to say I, I, I welcome this opportunity I'm glad to be here for Tim but I want to spend a little time before I start talking about Tim to kind of speak on the people who really made this possible. Um, the impressive leadership Tim uh, quickly becomes the senior boy is on you get senior boy is on for the airmen in this room they understand what that means I mean he's doing well he's soaring well above his peers right, uh, also, uh, we'll, we'll leave it that and Tim was recognized for his efforts. He actually even stays there longer than the normal time just because the two star wanted him to be there based on his efforts and what he was already doing. So Tim, we'll say, uh, wrong star. We'll still be friends. But uh, I do want to leave you with uh, one thing as I close. And if I can get this right, it's not a lot of He said, uh, from, I want to leave you with a quote from, from Leo Roosevelt, I think is very appropriate. I cannot believe that the purpose of life is to merely be happy. I believe the purpose of life is to be useful, honorable, to be compassionate. Above all, I believe it is to now. It is to count. It is to stand for something. To have it make some difference that you live at all. I would say, Tim, walk away knowing you matter. You made a tremendous, tremendous difference. So many. So as I close, service I medal, ninth Oak Leaf Cluster. Lieutenant Colonel Timothy K. McCarty distinguished himself in the performance of outstanding service to the United States while assigned as the commander, 45th Security Forces Squadron, Space Launch Delta 45. Patrick Space Force Base, Florida. During this period, Lieutenant Colonel McCarty expertly led 412 active duty members in the largest Air Force civilian police force, providing security and law enforcement operations for two military eight-hour shift schedule. Furthermore, Lieutenant Colonel McCarty eradicated a seven-year, 35% Department of the Air Force officer vacancy rate to now having a new hire waiting list. His flawless leadership garnered more than $8 million worth of state-of-the-art, technologically advanced security upgrades to include the Air Force's largest counter-unmanned aerial system, four Ranger 5 ground-based radar systems, and multiple in the United, United States Air Force. Air Force Special Order Number Alpha Charlie-002043, Lieutenant Colonel Timothy K. McCarty, effective 1 December, 2021, you are relieved from active duty, Space Launch Delta 45, Patrick Space Force Base, Florida. You retired from the Armed Forces of the United States of America, effective 1 December 2021, in the grade of Lieutenant Colonel, 
after 32 years, two months, and three days of service. Ladies and gentlemen, career, Lieutenant Colonel McCarty, of allegiance to his country, devotion to duty, and personal integrity above all. He wore the badge of authority with dignity and restraint and to your career of service to his country. For more than 200 years, the American flag has been the symbol of our nation's unity, as well as a source of pride and inspiration for millions of citizens. Born on June 14, 1777, the Second Continental Congress determined that the flag of the United States be 13 stripes, alternating between seven red and six white, and that the Union be 13 stars, white in a blue field representing a new constellation. Between 1777 and 1960, the shape and design of the flag evolved into the flag presented before you today. The 13 horizontal stripes represent the original 13 colonies, while the stars represent the 50 states of the Union. The colors of the flag are symbolic as well. Red symbolizes hardiness and valor, white signifies purity and innocence, and the blue represents vigilance, perseverance, and justice. Traditionally a symbol of liberty, the American flag has carried the message of freedom and inspired Americans both at home and abroad. In 1814, Francis Scott Key was so moved at seeing the stars and stripes waving after the British shelling of Baltimore's Fort McHenry that he wrote the words to the Star Spangled Banner. In 1892, the flag inspired Francis Bellamy to write the Pledge of Allegiance, our most famous flag salute and patriotic oath. In July of 1969, almost 52 years to the day, the American flag was flown in space when Neil Armstrong planted it on the surface of the moon. Today, our flag flies on constellations of US Air Force satellites that circle our globe and on the fin flash of our aircraft in harm's way in every corner of the world. It flies in the heart of every airman who serves our great nation. The sun never sets on our US Air Force, nor on the flag we so proudly cherish. Since 1776, no generation of Americans has spared the responsibility of defending freedom. Today's airmen remain committed to preserving the freedom that others won for us for generations to come. 
By displaying the flag and giving it a distinctive fold, we show respect to the flag and express our gratitude to those individuals who fought and continue to fight for freedom at home and abroad. Since the dawn of the 20th century, airmen have proudly flown the flag in every major conflict on lands and skies around the world. It is their responsibility, our responsibility, to continue to protect and preserve the rights, privileges, and freedoms that we as Americans enjoy today. The United States flag represents who we are. It stands for freedom we all share and the pride and patriotism we feel for our country. We cherish its legacy as a beacon of hope to one and all. And we present it to you today. Long may it wave. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce Lieutenant Colonel Timothy K. McCarty, United States Air Force, retired. <laughs> long friend Rob Moore. You know, as a piece of that story Rob didn't say is uh, when we were stationed here together 21 years ago as a second lieutenant as a master sergeant. You know, our kids played basketball together. Our squadron had won the best in space command and Rob had just finished up his bachelor's degree. And, you know, he's a master sergeant. He's already got 14 years of service and once I learned that he had his bachelor's degree complete and I uh, got to know him pretty good, actually really well, I said, Rob, you need to be an officer. And Rob's response to me was, I'm too old. I've already a master sergeant. I've had it on. I've been in the Air Force for 14 years. I said, true, you are old. <laughs> <laughs> but the reason you need to be an officer is because where you're at right now, brother. This guy's going places. And in one small way, Rob, I kind of feel like I, I'm taking you like the fourth grade for a show and tell right now. <laughs> to say that in some small way, indirectly, I was able to persuade you to make the decision to become an officer. And I'm really glad and proud to see you there. Listen, me and Lisa can't thank you enough, brother, for the kind words and you making the trip all the way from DC. I'm looking to come into your retirement ceremony too and breaking some bread in the afterlife. Aww. Thank you, Rob. I want to give a special thanks to Staff Sergeant Brian Hardy, kid in the back there, flowery Florida shirt. The kid spent uh, several hours while well, he could have been spending them with his family putting that video together with photos worth of 32 years of my, uh, my great memories. Uh, I get to carry that in my, long in my retirement days and watch it in my man cave. Brian, that, that video really meant a lot. Thank you. Uh, so Master Sergeant Saunier, that cat, he surprises you every time. This guy's been busy for the last five or six months just absolutely killing it, not just putting this ceremony together, which takes several months. But he put together a $10,000 epic picnic, and that's what it really was. Justin, I know you had a few friends. That, where are you at? I know you had a few friends, brother, that helped you put together, but I know you're the real honcho behind this. Captain Teresa Gathers, my friend, fellow commander, and my mentee. I was really upset when she said she, she was going to leave the active service and go to uh, full-time guard up in Jacksonville. But she made some good decisions because look at her now. She's a captain, and she's commanding a squadron. You know, there was a uh, time when we were talking about my retirement ceremony for the very first time, and before I could get a ceremony, before I even got a word out of my mouth, those are the things that make a person feel real good, Teresa. So me and Lisa are really looking forward to having some more wines on my back to add me in yeah. <laughs> I got a lifelong friend in the audience. We go back further than any other comrade I have still serving in the Air Force today, Lieutenant Colonel Mike Speck and his wife, Mel Melody, who made it all the way in from uh, Langley. 
You know, I know that I've known this cat since we were both senior airmen back in 1991 when we were under Strategic Air Command at the time, guard and missiles under SAC. Wow. If you had a pager back then, you were a big deal. <laughs> That's a true fact. We had electric typewriters out in the missile field. And I remember first meeting Mike and he was telling me his story about how they had to evacuate out of Clark Air Force Base in the Philippines because of the eruption of Mount Pinatubo and how his family had lost everything. Air Force said, grab your wife, grab your kids, grab your dog, everybody gets a suitcase and get on out. We'll pay for all your stuff later on. That was my first conversation with Mike. Thank you, brother. Hey, you're the true definition of a lifelong friend. Retired Senior Master Sergeant Glenn Davis and his wife, Tina, came in all the way from Alabama. <laughs> Got an interesting, very quick story about that guy. Uh, he's the one that I ran the Elite Guard outfit with uh, back there in USAFE. Did some extremely exotic uh, TDYs, business-wise. Got to do some really, really exotic traveling on Uncle Sugar's Dime. But we also got to take a trip that I'll never forget in my entire life because I, I scratched one of the things off on my bucket list. You see, me and Glenn, uh, we flew from Europe with seven other defenders uh, from Ramstein to Pamplona, Spain to run with the Bulls in 2005. Crazy as shit. <laughs> Scary. But, you know, the other defenders that we went with, they drank so much sangria the night before, they couldn't get up the next morning to go do the run. Only me and Glenn, the old man, the two old guys in the crowd, we did it. We got to the Cobble Street at, by 06 in the morning and we ran with the Bulls. This is one of my most fondest memories of you, Glenn. Thank you guys for coming. So I'm not going to say anything more about Jason Justice besides to say that uh, last week at the picnic, I did beat him both times we went down the water slide. <laughs> <laughs> Matt Rebels, Jeff Griffith, Eric Pelican, Cody Inman, Ray Lomita, and David Oldenhouse, all parts of the triad during my time at command and trip in. You don't get a chance to see each other very often. Came in all the way from Michigan. Thank you guys. My brother and sister-in-law, Lori and Fred, and my nieces, Grace and Chloe, all the way, made, made the long trip from uh, Michigan too. Thank you guys very much, me and Lisa, really appreciate it. So I have to say that even though your retirement is coming, you're never really prepared for what it feels like. But I knew it was time to retire after multiple occasions. I needed at least two tries to get up off the couch. Next week, I'm gonna wake up in a new life, but empty of your company, and I already feel like I'm in a strange limbo. So many people have asked me prior to this ceremony, are you excited, are you excited? I like literally hundreds of people ask you that once they learn of your retirement. So many people ask me that I actually took five minutes one day sitting on the couch having a wine with Lisa and I was like, why do people keep asking that? Because I don't think it's the right word. But then I started thinking some things and it, literally I think they were kind of dumb thoughts in a way but then after I thought about them a little more, it's like, I don't have to lace up my boots anymore after 32 years. Oh my God, yes. <laughs> the good news as Lisa has said and a few others, we're only 900 steps away from the ocean. I'm gonna be doing some surfing, some bike riding, some long walks on the ocean with Lisa. You're gonna see us either wearing something that says we take pride in being a defender or a locals t-shirt. But I wanna finish by thanking my immediate family. First, my son, Zachary. Zachary and his wife, Thea, my granddaughters, grandchild, Penelope, Ivy, and Milo came in from McDill where Zachary stationed as a cyber surety NCO. Zachary just made TechSart his first time out. Really proud of you, Zachary. And I was also really... I was also really happy to tell him that he made tech sergeant before his own commander. So I don't care what you other commanders think. If it's your son, you get dibs. Thank you, Skyler, and our oldest daughter, uh, granddaughter, Marley Kay. Skyler's a gaming extraordinaire when he gets that one day off a week from work. Uh, I'll tell you what, General Purdy, when I learned that you were a gamer, this guy would give you a run for your money. <laughs> but all said, like uh, Rob alluded to, and so did Lisa, is these boys did seven different school changes in three different countries and ten moves. Military brats for sure they are, and especially for enduring the military brat life in the security forces career field. I love you guys. So two final special and specific thank yous. The first one goes to the, per the woman who raised me. That would be my mom. You know, she raised pretty much four totally out of control hooligan boys all at the same time, pretty much on her own. You know, she had an opportunity to attend only two events in my career. And the second most important is Lisa. So most of you that know us know that we've been together since the third and fourth grade. You've heard it mentioned a few times here today. 
But I want to start out by saying the day I got married to her, to her was not the best day of my life. The best day of my life happened at Bangor Edison Elementary School in the December of 1979 when one of my little hooligan buddies in the, my fourth grade gang, just 30 minutes prior to going outside to recess, he had the audacity and the epiphany apparently to tell all the rest of us little hooligans that girls no longer had cooties. <laughs> My friend Mike Jones to this very day, I remember him slapping Troy Benson in the back of the head while the rest of us looked at him and said, what the hell are you talking about? Of course they got cooties. He said, no, my mom told me last night that they don't. That's not real. Girls don't have cooties. So he said, well, if your mom's right, as long thought, girls don't have cooties, the next logical thing was to go outside and pick out girlfriends that recess. <laughs> this is a true story, people. <laughs> It's winter time in Bay City, Michigan. It's December. We're heading off to the coat closet because the recess bell just rang. We're putting on our boots, our jacket, and our mittens. And this hooligan gang of about eight of us are running down the stairs in the big Edison building with zero rhyme or reason. A couple of those little hooligans were just pointing at girls with no rhyme or reason. Didn't even see their face, just pointing them at their back. That's how fast they wanted to get one. <laughs> Me and a few others, not us. We went around to the back of the second building. That's where all the playground equipment was. That's where all the, where all the kids were. I'm sprinting. By the time I get back there, I get to a kind of a slow, slow pace, almost as if I look like a fourth grade stalker in a playground. <laughs> I'm looking, I'm scanning, I'm looking, I'm scanning. Went by the merry ground, nothing going on there. Went to the roundabouts, nothing going on there. And then over at the moon house, often referred to as the cheese house, there she was. It looked like her mom had cut her hair with a Tupperware bowl. <laughs> this is true. She had no front teeth to her name. <laughs> she had this big pink puffy jacket on. She stood this tall, and when she walked, her arms were doing this. I said, that one right there is mine, with Mike Jones standing right next to me. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you, this is a true story again, to the teeth. And that was the best day of my life right there. <laughs> Lisa, nothing can thank you for the 32 years you did. Um, just as a small token, I and Lisa are gonna be flying to Rome in November to take a 15 night cruise throughout Europe. Oh, wonderful. Without a government time. <laughs> <laughs> I love you very much, Lisa. Thank you all for attending and God bless you all. I'd like to honor you by officially naming our newest quarter of a million dollar specialized boat after you. From this day forward, our newest Space Force Police Patrol boat will be known and named as McCarty's Mayhem. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. On behalf of Lieutenant Colonel Timothy K. McCarty and his family, thank you for attending. Please join us outside to officially christen McCarty's Mayhem. After the christening, please take a few moments to congratulate Lieutenant Colonel Timothy K. McCarty and his family.
beside you. There's no other squadron I'd like to retire in than the 45th. I love you all. God bless you all. I'm going to miss you. Defender 1 out. Stop. 